This is a Talk Station original podcast. On this week's episode of the Paper Boys podcast, JJ and I talk to a race car driver and country music singer Carson Gray and Bobby Watson, Carteret County Speedway owner Bob Lowry. We talk about Carson's journey from driver to recording artist and the history of the Speedway. It all starts right now on the Paper Boys podcast. Hello and welcome to the Paper Boys Podcast. I'm J.J. Smith. And I'm Zach Nally. We're reporters with the Carteret County News Times. We are joined, as always, by our faithful producer, Ross Carraway. And this week we are joined by a West Carteret senior who, in addition to going to school like any other 17-year-old, 18-year-old, is also trying to become a major singer and race car driver. That's just it. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) How about that combo? It's been absolutely insane, and I definitely did not see myself being here at 18 years old, but here we are, and so I'm just living life every single day and just going along with the flow of things. Well, let's go back to the beginning. When's the first time you got into a race car? First time I got into a race car was when I was 14 years old. Yeah, it was the day before my 15th birthday was my first ever race, Um, and I definitely was not expecting to be in there that soon. I wish I had gotten to one younger than that, but I mean, I think 15 or 14 was definitely a good age because, you know, not to tear stuff up and you're a little bit smarter when it comes to your decisions. So it was definitely a good call on my parents to hold off for a little bit. Yeah, that's a lot to trust a, a, a kid with. I mean, you're talking about a there's there's a there's a lot of money that goes into this sport and you, you get into there and you say, OK, I'm going to I'm going to try. I mean, you've never driven anything else before other than maybe like a, a four wheeler or a a go-kart or something like that and then and then you're off between then and now do you feel like you've grown a lot as a racer yeah i i grew up definitely being the wild child the four wheelers the atvs all of it that's all really all my family liked to do we had a good time doing it growing up and i definitely getting into the go-karts when i first started out was a big help in boosting my career and stuff like that i got a really good fan base it taught me a lot about driving the car and like being responsible and now we've moved up to bigger and faster cars so now you really have to be smart with your decisions and you can't you make quick moves but you have you also have to make smart moves because it's coming out of your own pocket sometimes how how did you get into it do you have uncles or dad what was into it so both of my uncles were I I went out to the racetrack with them they drove the mini stock and new cars Around the time that I was getting into it, two of my other cousins were getting into it. So we had all gone out there and been watching for years. And And, and these are all girls, right? Yes. So my two uncles are the ones that really got us all into it. And then us three girls, I think we started maybe a few races outside of each other. I was the first one to start. And then my two other cousins started like three or four races after that. So we got into it really quick. And they're younger than me. I think they were 10 and 11 when they got into the car. So it's it's been a little bit for all of us. But, I mean, we have a blast doing it. I, I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else besides my family. So it's just it kind of brought us closer, something to bond over. And that's really all our family talks about is racing. So <laughs> Yeah, no, those, just, uh, those are your cousins, uh, Summer Sullivan and – Myla Provost, right? Yes, and then we actually have now one of my other cousins, Riley Provost, which is Myla's younger sister. She's about to get into one as soon as they can get her car fixed. So, yeah, now we'll have four of us in it, which is very scary, especially with the two sisters because they'll be running in the same class. That's so unique. I mean, you don't see a ton of girls in racing, but to have four in the same family, obviously it's it's important to your family. It's a, it's a big part of I mean, you have plenty to talk about over Thanksgiving dinner and stuff. I mean, (laughs) you've all had experience behind the wheel. Well, most of our family dinners end up becoming arguments (laughs) because the girls really love to point out the fact that they have beat me one time. I see I'm, I am, I'm very competitive. So I wouldn't, I don't care how young you are. I don't care how cute you are. I'm not going to let you beat me on the track. We'll be family outside of that. But besides that, if I'm on the track with you, I'm not letting you in. And there was one time I had a motor malfunction and I couldn't even finish the race. There was like three laps to go. 
and they started dying laughing after the race saying how they had beat me and all this and that and I'm just like well technically you beat me because I wasn't able to finish but if you want to take it you can so see that they're down causes. here they, you, 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 you got to give them something they're down here they need something <laughs> to, to, to reach up for there yeah, I mean, I love them to pieces, and I want to see them do great, but I would never let them beat me. Like, it's just, it just just can't happen. Uh, of your generation, is it all girls or any of the boys in your family race? So, actually, it's all females that race. Wow. My uh, younger cousin, he is big into travel ball, so mainly they do that with him. And then my brother, he became, he became a star basketball player. So, I mean, really, it was just the females that were left. But I do think we have two of our younger ones that are going to grow up. We have one that is obsessed with NASCAR, like crazy obsessed with NASCAR. And he loves going out the races. So I'm sure we'll have at least one boy, hopefully, coming up. Eventually we, get him in there. Yeah, we need one. We need one. The girls are really taking the win in the family right now. So yeah, and, the boys need to be represented. Yeah. So you mentioned how your uncles had raced and, and you know, so you at least had that part in your family. But at what point I get I mean, your dad Cliff at some point said, I'm gonna go and get a car and put Carson in there and see what happens, I guess. Yeah, so we had been practicing at broad i don't even know if i should say this <laughs> we we were using the old broad creek middle school track and after school would get out my little cousins i want to say milo was in sixth grade maybe not even she may have been in fifth grade but i know my summer my cousin summer she was in at least sixth or seventh grade whenever we started doing this and we would go out to broad creek middle school and after school got out it was probably like five or six o'clock in the afternoon and we would take a cheap go-kart that we bought off of marketplace and we would just go full throttle around that track because it was wow yeah i mean well it so was you had just, that in you from the star there you that was a big yeah <laughs> you had the need for speed no doubt I, yeah i definitely had the need for speed and i, I mean i drive i drive big lifted trucks I, I just love all that stuff like yeah i i'm definitely the oddball out of my my family mm. out of my mom and my dad and my brother because my parents didn't even like going out to the racetrack i had begged them and begged oh. them to go watch my uncle with me and they absolutely hated it and well, then i finally convinced my mom when covid started to i was gonna say i remember it. your mom had to had uh, take a little convincing on the safety end to, to let you get out there and start doing this yeah so when when our cheer gym closed down for covid i was i'll never forget this day it was probably the best day of my life <laughs> We were riding bikes around my neighborhood, and it was just me and my mom. I knew I couldn't have my dad there whenever I asked her about this, but I had planned it all out in my head of how in the world I was going to convince her to let me do this. So I had sweet-talked her all day. I had done everything that she had asked me to. She was in a great mood. And we went on our little bike ride, and I was talking to her. I was like, hey, racing seems like it'd be like a good thing because it's not shutting down. Like, it gives me something to do. I've wanted to do it for a long time, and I'm older now, so I think now's the time for you to let me get into it. And so she didn't really give me a full answer, <laughs> and then I stalked her one day on Life 360 and ended up finding out they were getting, they were going to pick me up a car before I even saw the car wow. and knew that the car was coming. And they were so mad about that. That's a whole other story I can't <laughs> right, even right. get well, into. They didn't want to be able to bring that surprise <laughs> yeah. to you, and you're, you're sitting at home like, oh my God, I can't wait till they get here. <laughs> Well, they actually, they made me meet them in Havelock. And I told my brother, I said, I already know what this is. Like, they're not even surprising me that I was like. Did you I do the whole, did you act like, you know. Yeah, oh I acted like I did it. But my parents definitely knew that I knew about it. Because as soon as I got out the car, I was all grins. And I just couldn't help it. Like, I was so excited. You're looking around. Where is it? <laughs> right. I had literally, I think that actually might have come out my mouth. And I think I kind of screwed myself on that one. But it's okay. Because. Live, love, laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you remember getting into that first car, and I think, what was it, mini cup? Yeah, so the mini cups. I miss them things so much. If I could give, if I could go back in one, it just, at least one more time. Actually, I have a, I have a lot of the mini cup drivers that I'll help out now, because I did do really good in that, in that division. And so most of them are now like, I want to race you. Like, I bet I can beat you. And I'm just like, I bet you $20 you won't be me. So, but I just love messing around with them. So if I could definitely get back in one, I would, I would never miss, I would never. When it's crazy, you know, those are, those are not huge cars. I mean, they're, they're pretty big, but now, you know, you're racing what you're racing now. And it's, it's got to be a, tell us what these are. What's a mini cup and what else have you raced and what, what, what's the speeds, what's the weights to give us the different, the differences. So the mini cup is basically 
honestly, a go-kart with a body on it. Okay. If you want me to be completely honest, that's really <laughs> what it is. And there's, so there's the champ carts and then there's the mini cups. And the mini cups, a lot of the champ carts are just older guys having a good time and stuff like that with racing. And then the mini cups are for the beginner kids okay. that are starting out and trying to figure out ways around the track and sure. learning the track and different things like that. It's a really good starting point for most people. And I was older whenever I got into it. So And those are good like forty five fifty, is that right? So depending on the track, I think at Carteret we went up they've changed it now. They've actually slowed them down since there's some younger kids getting into it. But before we were going like 55, 60 mile an hour. Mm-hmm. I think we were running like 21 seconds around Carteret. I mean, we were still rolling pretty good and we didn't have suspension. And my car was probably the most unsafe car out there. I think <laughs> like really if I, if it was my, like I wouldn't have sold that car to anybody <laughs> if it was my choice. Just because, I mean, I had, I had the small roll cage bars. There was just, if I would have, I got very fortunate that I did not hit a wall on that car because I would have been beat up for well, sure. You're brand new at the sport. You got to do what you got to do, right? Well, I mean, we just saw a car. We were like, that's a good deal. I mean, it comes race ready. <laughs> like, let's go. Like, we were, we were excited. So, but then the legend cars, they actually have an FZ09 crotch rocket motor in them. And you can also run the 1200 Yamaha or the 1250 Yamaha. And these cars will go anywhere from like 80 mile an hour to like 115. Like it is insane. So it was a, it was a big jump. Plus the car that I had was an automatic. So, I mean, you, I mean, it's a go kart. So you just get in there and you press the, you press the brake brake and press the gas. But this car, like I had to learn shifting. I had to learn everything. Everything was brand new in this car for me, but we picked it up pretty quick. And now I'm out there beating some butt at Carter County (laughs) Speedway. So but it took me it took me a long time to learn. So a lot of people think you just get in it and you go. No, I learned that one the hard way. Yeah. You don't just get in it and go. Yeah, those are fun cars. Those are screamers. When I went out to the track a couple times, those are loud. Yeah, and they move. Right. And how nice though to have uh, a track like the Speedway out there. I mean, you know, you could be into racing, but if there's not a track near you, especially one that's available like that, well then sure. you know it's just not something that you can do. Yes, Carteret. I absolutely love Carteret. It's one of my favorite. It's it's a very hard track, and you have, you definitely have to be a driver that either wants to take the time to learn it, or a driver that is just a very overall very vigilant driver. Because there, there's a lot of quick moves that you can make. It is very flat, so most of the tracks out here are a little bit bigger and maybe have quite a bit more banking. But Carteret, it's small. There's not a lot of room on the track. So you really, you have to be an aggressive driver out there, but you also have to be a smart driver out there. And I love the scenery of the track. I think that's probably one of my favorite things about going out there. The pictures always come out great. The videos come out great. And you, I mean, it's just a very welcoming track to go to. And that's why I love racing there. It's one of the best tracks, but one of the hardest tracks I've ever raced at. So it takes time to learn, but if you're really dedicated to do it, you can. Hi folks, Bob Lowry here, and this episode of the Paper Boys Podcast is brought to you by the Carteret County Speedway. Carteret County Speedway hosts Bluegrass at the Beach October 20th and 21st with performances from Rhonda Vincent and the Rage. Plus the Coastal Ramblers Band, Poe Ramblin' Boys, Lorraine Jordan and Carolina Road, and the Clyde Maddox and Garrett Newton Bluegrass Band. One and two day passes are available. Save money and get your advance tickets online now. Camp spots are also available. Bluegrass at the Beach, October 20th and 21st. More details on Facebook and advance tickets at carteretspeedway.com. This is Daniel Barrow, the head football coach of the West Carteret Patriots, and you're listening to the Paper Boys Podcast. Do you remember your first race? Yes, I do remember my first race. It was very chaotic, very scary. So unfortunately, with the way I ended up starting out, I had never been in the actual race car. We had like three or four weeks of just straight rain. And then we had that race that we ended up putting in the weekend after all the rain had finally stopped. So I think we got one practice, one qualifying, and then the race. So I had those I had those two times on the track before the actual race started and I was competing against the two champions that had tied for the championship the year before. So I knew I had a lot on my back 
And, you know, you want to go out there and do well your first race. And I ended up going out there and winning the whole entire race. So I was very shocked. I think the boys were more shocked than what I was because they were like, who is this girl that has right, just not randomly just a girl, but showed who is up? This? Yeah. Right, who has just randomly showed up here and won this race. But they ended up becoming two of my really close friends. One of them, I haven't seen him at the racetrack in a very long time since Mini Cups, but his name was Caleb Braswell. I haven't seen him since Mini Cups, but Scotty Benford, we call him Scotty B. We actually... Right after he moved up to Legends, about six months later, I moved up to Legends. So this past weekend, we had a we had a pretty big race. He was in first, and I was in second. It was a very clean race. I love racing with him. So I told him this weekend he better be ready because I'm coming, and I'm gonna beat him next time. So I've abs- I've loved racing with him. I raced with him since the very beginning. So he's always been one of the close competitors to me. And, and didn't just race that day. Sung the national anthem before your first race. Is that right? Yes, I did sing the national anthem. That was my very first time singing at the racetrack. So overall, it was just a very stressful day. You really put Um, yourself out there. Yeah, I really did put myself out there that first race. But honestly, if I wouldn't have done it that first race, I wouldn't have had half the fans that I have now. I love all of them. I see them every single weekend at the racetrack. Sometimes they'll come down to the meet and greets and they'll bring their kids or their grandkids and stuff like that. So it's really cool to meet them and spend time with them. But it definitely did get me a lot of recognition. Oh, I bet every fan left that day knowing who who Carson (laughs) was for sure. Yeah, they yeah, it was probably one of the best days of my life besides whenever I got my mini cup and got in a race car for the first (laughs) time. So I love how the first race she sings before the race. Then she goes and wins the race. Right. And then later on, she develops this habit where she's singing while she's racing. Okay. Yeah. So that's a thing, right? Yes. So um, I can't even remember the name of that song, but if you like pina coladas, (laughs) like, I don't know why. It was just like, there was one day that I think my, either my radios weren't working or my radio was dead and there was no one on the track. And so I was like, I'm putting my AirPods and I'm going to. Like, I'm going to go and just have a good time out there on the track. And so, randomly, that song comes on on my playlist. I was probably out there for, like, 20 laps or so. And the song comes on my playlist, and I'm just singing it in the car. And then my mom, I ended up telling my mom about it. My mom told everybody about it, thinking that it was the most hilarious thing in the whole entire world. So, that (laughs) just kind of became my thing, where I sing in the car. And, like, if I get nervous or if I'm in a situation I don't really know what to do, I'm just like, all right, hold on. And you like pee in the cool. Like, that's literally, that's me. Like, that's just who I am. But a little self soothing yeah. there. Just a little, it get really, centered. It really just makes you feel more comfortable for like some reason. Like, if you're trying to make a sketchy move and you're like, oh, I don't know, you just play that song in your head or start singing it. It's like everything just works out great. So that's what I've always done. And I haven't been doing as much anymore. So I definitely need to start back up on it because <laughs> I'm starting to notice the difference. Have you always been into singing? So I have been singing since before I can even remember. And the first time that I ever stepped foot on a stage was the most embarrassing moment of my life. It was fifth grade talent show. Oh my goodness. For Tiller School in Beaufort. I thought I was like so great. And now that I watched that video, I'm just like, oh, I am definitely glad I have gotten some improvement since then (laughs) but I mean it was it was great and it definitely boosted my confidence to get back on stage more but you can definitely tell a difference growing up with stage presence or the singing itself has gotten a lot better so but when my mom pressured me to get up on that stage in fifth grade it changed everything for me (laughs) so how long has it been a thing where you like this is what I want to do for a career so I was very with when it comes to racing and singing I've always been asked which one would I give up and really honestly I wouldn't ever want to give up either one of them but singing really became a huge thing for me whenever I became older and I started learning more about real life and what goes on in real life and I could have an amazing offer for racing right now and that would be absolutely phenomenal but it's never something that's guaranteed and neither is singing and so but singing really became a big priority for me 
whenever I went to Mount Olive. And for a long time, I doubted myself with singing because like your family tells you, oh, you're a great singer. Friends and family tell you you're a great singer. But when I went to Mount Olive and there was people from Nashville there that were judging you and giving you feedback and they told me they were like, you have a great voice. They had only told me one thing wrong and that was because I was sick and I told them that I was sick before I went on. So, but that was really the only thing that they had said to me and then they reached out to me a week later and I was like, dang, like these people, these big people that have worked with big people actually see that I have something that I can be great at and that I can do. And that's when it really set in that this is something that I can see myself What doing. was that, like a showcase you went to? So it was actually just an audition just to go to Nashville and work with some people up there, okay. at, like either this camp or this little event thing that they had for like a week. And so I didn't get invited to that. Instead, they asked me like, hey, do you want to work with PCG? And I was like, yes, of course. So we signed on with them. I've written songs with some of their co-writers. I've also, my producer, he works with them. So I've done a lot of things through them. And now that we're kind of figuring our way out slowly, we're kind of branching out and other people are branching out. Two weeks ago, I was in Chattanooga, Tennessee, working with Dynamo Studios. And I recorded another song, which actually you guys are the first to hear. So I guess now everybody's going to hear it, but it's okay. (laughs) (laughs) But so this was actually part three to my All Back Road song. So I was going to say, to let the listeners know, this summer she she went up to Tennessee and recorded your debut single, All Back Roads, which is available on Apple Music, Spotify, and YouTube? Pretty much every streaming app yeah, that there is. Yeah. So, what But was the, that the music video is on YouTube. What was that like going up there and, and actually putting something you wrote, you know? It was scary just because you can think you think that you have an amazing song written for yourself, but really when you get up there around these big people mm. that have worked with such amazing artists and have seen the talent and the writing ability that ability that there is it's like are you bringing something to the table that is worth producing and so with this producer I actually had the chance to write all back roads with him so it was scary going up there but having him there writing the song with me and then him being able to produce it was a huge huge help for me personally this third song that I have just written is completely written by myself and it's called making friends in my hometown so I'm really, really scared, and just because you love me, Kim McLean, I don't know if you guys know who that is. She's an amazing songwriter, amazing singer. She helped me write my part two to All Back Road, which is Just Because You Love Me. So I have that's the song, that song comes out in like a week and a half, two weeks. Oh, wow. So yeah, everything is moving fairly quickly. Exciting. But yeah, it's exciting, but it's scary. But you just have to go day by day and kind of just fill things out. And if you have an amazing idea, write it down. That's what I tell everybody. How long have you been doing that, writing down like lyrics and stuff? I was never really good at guitar or instruments or anything like that for the longest time. Um, so typically I would listen to a song and I would use their beat that they had to it, like karaoke, and I would start like writing out some songs. I've never used those songs. They're from when I was like 12 years old. Of course. But um, this, this song, I mainly take a lot of my songs and write them out of personal experiences. I've never been one that can really write a song without a co-writer that I don't know something about or that's something that has like hurt me in the past. And so with these three songs, this is all coming from like a true heartbreak that I went through. And I know I'm young and no, that's what that's why I like it though like, because like I feel like there's a lot of people that now that don't really write about like the teenage love stories. And so I'm trying to be that person that says, hey, it's okay to feel this way because I felt this way too at one point. And writing writing all that down has kind of helped me get over it in a way. So it all worked out in the end, and I absolutely love writing. Yeah, they say write what you know. And if you're a teenager living a teenage life, then why not write what you know? Right. And it's for me, like for me, it's just kind of like a comfort thing too. So, And that's why I really like doing it. I had a great time. So school racing, singing, you're, you're quite busy. Yes. So I actually got out of school, not this year, but the year before at the very beginning of the year, I think I was in school for maybe like three or four days and then I went homeschooled. So it was a start of my 
junior year. So now I've actually moved forward in the process a lot faster. No doubt. So technically I'm done with school, but I still have like a little bit more to do. But uh, I'm just, I'm so ready to get it over with and done with and just start focusing on work because it is starting to stress me out. (laughs) Well, in the meantime, you are living your best life, aren't you? And we're excited to, to see what happens next and to see where your singing career goes and your racing career. And it's been a lot of fun to watch the last few years. And I'm sure it's just nothing but up, up from here. I really hope so. I see a lot of opportunities up ahead. I've been asked to do a lot of great things. So I'm really excited to see what goes on. But I just live every day, day by day. You never know what's going to happen. You never know who's going to approach you. And just like you guys, I had no t- no way of knowing two days ago that I was going to be here. But now I'm here. Um, so I kind of just go day by day and just live life to the fullest. And when you hit it big, you're going to come back and visit with us, right? That's right. That's of right. course. Oh, of no. course I will. I'll probably put you guys on my YouTube channel at some point. <laughs> Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you guys for having me. I'm Ryan Kelly. I'm Lynn Schultz. And we're the hosts of the Senior Moment Podcast. Each week, we bring you conversations with experts right here in our community about the common and uncommon challenges facing our aging population and caregivers. We discuss the challenges of caring for a loved one with dementia, as well as the importance of health planning, family history, and much more. Join us every week for Senior Moment, streaming now on Spotify, YouTube, and at carolinacoastonline.com. We're joined now by Bobby Watson's Carter County Speedway owner, Bob Lowry, one of our favorite people on the planet because they've been a sponsor from day one. Of course. We appreciate it. (laughs) Yeah, man. It's our pleasure. We're we're happy to have you finally on. So you are the owner of, as I've just mentioned, Bobby Watson's Carter County Speedway, which is a great track here in Carter County. We had Carson Gillikin on, Carson Gray on, who was telling us that's one of her favorite tracks. What is it about the track you think that people love so much? Uh, I think it's the field. I think it's right there. You know, the, the fans get to be right there on top of the drivers. It's a very interactive type of feeling. Not only that, it is a, one of the nicest tracks. We're actually known as America's nicest short track. And that comes from people that travel, you know, North Carolina, South Carolina, all around. They go to these tracks, and when they come there, you know, that's what they tell us. So we took that tagline, and we made it our own, and, and we strive to – to continue to be America's nicest short track. Treating people like family, family oriented is our number one uh, goal. Kids 10 and under have gotten in free ever since you know we started. People of all ages come out there. We do something at the start of the at the start of the race of every race. It's called the meet and greet. And so the drivers get to come down on the track meet the drivers, get to know them, such as Carson Gilligan Gray. And, uh, you know, I told her the other day, "Can I? what do I call you now, Carson, now that you've been to Nashville a couple of times, you know. She said, Bob Lauer, you know what to call me, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but she's an awesome driver. And we get to see kids like that start from the ground up. Mini Cups is our beginning uh, division. Now we've started a kids camp, and we have seen already uh, kids go to that camp one week. And come out, and next thing you know, their parents have bought them a race car. They've got them out of the house. They've got them off the iPads. They've got them racing. they got them in the garage. And one man said, it's the greatest gift that I could have ever done for him was starting that kid's camp because he got his son back. Never did get to see him. He was on his iPad mm-hmm. continuously in the bedroom. And now that he's racing, he said every time he comes home, he's at the door wanting to know, can we go work on the race car? Can oh, we go awesome. practice? So. That's a, a great compliment. Well, we were talking to her yesterday, and you know, it's one thing to have an interest in in racing, and you might, you know, might be something you you, you want to try or get into. But if you don't have a track mm-hmm. near where you live, it's, it's pretty much impossible. And how lucky the people here are to, to have that track there and be able to go watch or, or get into the hobby themselves. Right, you know, and it's right in our backyard. And you know, most of the time, it's just like if your dad is a baseball coach or a baseball player. Chances are his son is around it all the time. Mm. Next thing you know, he's picked it up. Well, down here, we don't, you know, we don't have a lot of racers at our hometown, so to speak. And Carson, her father never knew nothing about racing. They didn't race. Yeah, she had some uncles, but otherwise yeah. it wasn't like a, a totally generational thing for her. Yeah, and then she, like I said, started out with many cups and, and seen that she, was, she liked it. And that's the, that's the key to it, not forcing a kid into it, mm. but letting them kind of grow into it and say hey i like this let's go do it again let's go do it again and so it develops into a a little career you know for him 
Yeah, especially for those who, who continue to move up. And I'm sure it's fun for you to watch people like her, people like Scotty Benford, who, who come in as young people and then they, they move up to legends and right. maybe they get a little older and keep on moving up and it just becomes a, a focal point of their lives. It, exactly. And we've had a chance to witness several young people do that, move up to late models and keep right on going. And, you know, I keep reminding them, I said, you know, when you get to that NASCAR status, don't forget Bob Lyle. That's Lyman, right. That's right. Because I'm going to want some passes at that Speedway <laughs> Club and all that stuff, you know. But it's great, too, to uh, see the families out there again together doing something that they all like. And next thing you know, they're all involved. You know, the dad, he's tinkering on the car. He's, he's doing that. And then mom's, you know, she's keeping score maybe. She's uh, making sandwiches, making sure all that done. And yesterday for practice, we had – grandparents all the way from south dakota that come down wow uh, to watch their little grandson race you know and uh, so it's pretty neat a quarter mile track yeah how far do you go when you stop being a short track uh half mile half mile well and and you know nascar is still a half mile and they say half mile short track but on this on this our little scene you know for us most of them are a quarter of a mile Mm. four tenths and then, of course, you got the super speedways, Talladega, which is about two miles. And you lose track of the whole car and everything for a couple of minutes, it seems like. All of a sudden, they come by again. But ours is, you know, right there. It's compact, easy to get to, a lot of, you know, concessions and all that stuff, too. And we provide a great service to the community. We really do. But having folks from out of town come down here and race, um, they, they visit our they visit the Crystal Coast. They visit the great restaurants that we got. They visit the hotels, motels, holiday inns, uh, all that stuff. They do the shopping, the aquarium. Bobby Labonte's pit crew, his family will come down here. They'll come down on Wednesday. The race is on Saturday, and we'll probably see them a couple of hours before the race. They've been to, you know, picking up shells down there at Hammocks Beach State Park. They've been to the aquarium. They've been everywhere else. And I said, are they even coming to the race? He said, they'll be here sometime. But, but that's what we want. And uh, we had a ton of people do that. Well, I know someone that grew up here, you know, and there was more family-friendly entertainment venues, activities to do when I was growing up than there are now. And so we're so appreciative of the ones that are here now because mm-hmm. they're, they're few and far between, but the ones we have are, are, are great. And you're right, that that, that venue is a, a great place to take your kids. And I've been a few times, and it is just a blast. You're, you're right up on it. Yeah. It's a beautiful setting for the track. You've got the, 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 was it the, 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 the restaurant? Inside? The Moonshiners. Yeah. Uh-huh. Moonshiners, I, I, Bar and I, Grill, and uh, Museum. You know, we've got a local, um, and we got a lot of local memorabilia along with Junior Johnson, who had, uh, you know, he was uh, important to us, and he was a great friend of Bobby Watson's. And, and, you know, I do apologize to the folks out there because I, you know, my name is Bob Lowry, and we named it Bobby Watson's Carter <laughs> County Speedway. And a lot of people come up and said, hey, Bobby. I said, no. I said, I did that in honor of my buddy. He, uh, he gave blood, sweat, and tears. He worked from sunup to sundown to build that great venue. And, um, and so when, when I took hold of it, you know, after he passed away in 2018, I said it's only fitting that I name it Bobby Watson's Carteret County Speedway. Tell us about Bobby Watson and his drive to get that track here. Well, it was, uh, you know, it was just determination, and it was uh, persistency that got that track going. He went to um, a local track there in Langley, Virginia, and uh, he's seen the track. He's seen the layout of it. And he come back, and he took that footprint, and he laid it down right there in a little town called Pelletier, you know, right there by Cape Carter. All roads lead to Carter County Speedway, Highway 58, you know, take 24 right there. So you're right there at it. And uh, But what Bobby did was, because he was a racer at heart, he kind of make it a racer's track, too, with all the amenities that a racer would like if he went to a track. We, we've got a lot of history there with the 76 ball that came from Talladega mm. Motor Speedway. Uh, it was there. Him and Junior Johnson went to Talladega to a race. They went into the scrapyard, and they seen that big old orange ball there. And Bobby said, man, I sure would love to have that at, the, at my that. track. Yeah. Well, he, he kind of wanted it. You know, he, he, spoke the, uh, he spoke it into existence because of two weeks later, here comes that ball on the back of a flatbed, and uh, he put it up right there. Right above the arcade, we have an arcade uh, that's there along with uh, the restaurant, the tech center. You know, we have trackside passes, and mm-hmm. people can come and sit in the back of their pickup trucks, bring the grill. 
and all that stuff. And if folks hadn't been there and they want to know a little bit more about it, of course, it's Carter at Speedway.com. can tell you, kind of show you exactly what we're doing, when we're doing it. We have a lot of stuff there. And in, in just a little bit, we'll get into some of the other stuff that we do. But racing is our number one thing that we do do there, providing uh, that track, which is a kind of a flat track. So it makes it a driver's track. It is tough to drive. And a lot of folks will use a lot of excuses why they don't want to come. They're busy, they're this, that, and the other. And really, it's kind of, you know, it's very challenging. Bobby Labonte was one of the ones that said, hey, Bob, this thing here is a driver's track. A guy's got to be up on the wheel, kind of know what they're doing. But once you get that track down pat, you can go to the other tracks and kind of be ahead of the ball game. And sadly, uh, Bobby Watson was taken from us uh, at the age of 66 in 2018 after a bout with cancer. And then you took over the track, right? Yeah, he did. But, you know, cancer, he survived cancer. He survived. It was esophageal cancer. And he survived that and um, was out there Labor Day weekend in 2018. He worked about four days straight. We had big races. And then on that Monday, he had a big car show. A couple of days later, he says, Bob, you know, I think I'm going to go lay down for a minute. And this was like 10 o'clock in the morning. And I said, man, you need to go to a do- <laughs> you need to go to a doctor because Bobby never said that. He got up at uh, six six o'clock in the morning by seven. He'd already eat breakfast. He was on the track, and that lasted till late at night. And I knew something weren't right. Well, that Thursday Thursday evening, Bobby had uh, a massive stroke, mm. and uh, he never he never come out of it. Never survived wow. that. And the Lord seen fit to take him home, and uh, and then. Bobby seen fit to leave his dream to me. And so what we did was put up a banner. First thing we did was put up a banner that says, Keeping the Dream Alive. And we've managed to do that, and we did it, and we have done it in, in great fashion. And it was a labor of love for him. He, it was like this pavement short track before, right? And it took him like yeah. a decade to get it the way he wanted it. it. It was because it was a World Karting Association go-kart track. You oh, know, wow. Elliot Sattler and some of the other big NASCAR guys, they started uh, racing go-karts there. It was known as uh, one of the nicest go-kart tracks, too, paying out a lot of money and having tons of go-kart people. But Bobby wanted a car track. He wanted NASCAR. And so uh, he got to see his dream come true. In 2015, we dropped the green flag for the first time uh, as, a, as, a, as a short track, racing late models and the whole work. So ever since then, we've been looking forward. Carteret County Speedway hosts Bluegrass at the Beach, October 20th and 21st, with performances from Rhonda Vincent and the Rage. Plus the Coastal Ramblers Band, Poe Ramblin' Boys, Lorraine Jordan and Carolina Road, and the Clyde Maddox and Garrett Newton Bluegrass Band. One- and two-day passes are available. Save money and get your advance tickets online now. Camp spots are also available. Bluegrass at the Beach, October 20th and 21st. More details on Facebook and advance tickets at carteretspeedway.com. Hey y'all, this is Carson Gray and y'all are listening to the Paper Boys Podcast. You took over the track in 2018 when, when Bobby Watson died, but I'm curious what got you personally into it. Well, me and Bobby was friends for about 40 years prior to that, you know. We were in the automobile business together okay. years and years ago. I'd met him one day, I was over in Emerald Isle way back when in the mid-80s. And I was over there detailing cars. I had a detail shop that did pickups and deliveries. Well, I was uh, detailing Ronnie's car, uh, Ronnie Watson. That was Bobby's brother. And uh, Ronnie said, hey, Bob, my brother up there in Cedar Point's got a car lot, and he needs some help selling cars. You know, he's a mechanic, <laughs> but he needs somebody like you to go over there and sell cars. I said, Ronnie, I'm detailing cars. I'm pretty good at what I'm doing here. And uh, I said, but I'll go by and talk to him. Well, Bobby was the kind of guy that I went over there and seen him, started talking to him, and it seemed like we were best friends from the word go, you know, and we uh, we hit it off, to say the least, and became friends, and so we did that for a long time, and, and I knew that the, the go-kart track was going on, but I went into racing. You know, I was from Newport. I was from a tobacco field in Newport, never raced or anything else, unless we'd race around the Loop Road there in Newport, you know, with a one of my buddy's cars but you know he uh, he was doing that and I was selling cars and he was um, building that track and then you know as he began to tear that but as that began to fade out and he tore it down 
he uh, he needed some help selling billboards. He said, Bob Lowry, if you would, could you come over here and help me sell some billboards? I said, Bobby, I'm selling cars. You know, he said, yeah, but I know you can sell some billboards, <laughs> you know, and start telling people about the place. Well, that's exactly what I did because I knew that Bobby was facing insurmountable odds out there trying to build that track by himself with no help whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Uh, to say that he robbed Peter to pay Paul was an understatement. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's why he did a lot of the work himself. He had a lot of local guys from around there that, that pitched in and helped him, welders, builders, plumbers, electricians, the whole work. And uh, Bobby was the kind of guy that he was going to take the lead on something, even if he didn't know what he was doing. And, of course, somebody was going to pitch in. But, you know, as I was selling them billboards and people started to say, Bob, and they said, Bobby, you should tear this thing down. It's really not working, you know. And I'm thinking, hey, Bob, Bobby, that place is going to be the nicest track in the world. What are they, have they, haven't they been out here and seen it, you know? He said, I don't know. He said, I just might as well give up. I said, well, let me tell you something. Giving up, and I'll say this to everybody, giving up is not an option. And I kept telling Bobby that. And uh, from there, we um, just became, you know, partners. And I I was the marketing guy, promoting guy, and on-the-job training and getting people to buy into the dream. And next thing you know, we had a whole row full of billboards, and the track weren't even paved yet. Mm. And it's been that way ever since. We've got some of the greatest sponsors in Carteret County and surrounding areas. Uh, and I mean, when I say that, I mean big names, you know, that are, are good buddies of ours now and became friends. But they got their sponsorship on board. We're, we're continuing to move on. And then in 2018, like I said, when Bobby um, went home to be with the Lord, he just he left it to me. And uh, I didn't know anything about racing. I knew about selling billboards. But I didn't know the front end of a race car from the back end. And, uh, but, again, people stepped in and gave me a hand, you know, because you don't necessarily have to know everything, but you got to know people that do know. you got to surround yourself with surround people yourself. who know what they're doing. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking two of the best <laughs> right here, you know. Uh, is it different? Say you just took over this business from somebody mm-hmm. you didn't even know. Is, is it different because of your longtime friendship with Bobby and your devotion and love for each other that you feel like a duty to keep this going? <sighs> I ain't got a choice. <laughs> Giving up ain't an option, right. you know. And, uh, too, it's an honor, too, by the way, because, uh, you know, he built a great facility. And we threw in, uh, he was naming it Carteret County Speedway. I said, Bobby, you better better put Entertainment Center on that thing because we're going to have concerts out here, all that stuff. This place is great for that, you know. And uh, we did. And we've had some, you know, Marshall Tucker Band. Mm. We've had uh, Diamond Rio. We've had uh, Leonard Skinner. We've had Nantucket and a Sidewinder the other day. And uh, this weekend, we've got uh, Rhonda Vincent coming up, um, Bluegrass Hall of Famer, so to speak. She's one of the best there is. And, you know, and then, of course, we've got other events, too. You know, uh, coming up October 28th, people have a chance to come out there and see what we really do, wreck cars. Tell us a little bit about about, about that event. Well, it is called the Day of Destruction because we're in our fall schedule. We we go from, you know, the summertime where we race a little bit late. Races start at 6 or 7 p.m. And this coming October 28th, that event will start at uh, 2 o'clock. And uh, we'll we'll start with a trunk or treat. Um, Halloween contest, you know, $1,000 up for grabs in different divisions. And then we'll go with uh, what they call the Bombers, which is an entry-level race that anybody just got a car out the backyard can <laughs> come out there, put a little roll cage in it, and they can race. They're called Bombers, but we'll actually have 15, 20 of them racing at any given time. But more than that, after that, we take and we clear the track. We put out a few obstacles and we begin to tear up perfectly good cars. <laughs> and uh, we do what they call a paperclip race. We race backwards. We race with tires on top of the car, see how long you can keep the tires up there. And, uh, and this just race. Just have fun with it. Just have fun with it. Have a good time. Yeah. And uh, they actually talk me into driving. So any folks uh, out there that maybe want to challenge old Bob here to a race, you know, just bring an old car and come race, man, you know, and see what you got, buddy. 
And you all go from about April to November, is that right? We do, yeah. And November the 10th, 10th and 11th and 12th will be one of the biggest races in North Carolina. Tell us about that one. That one's called the Race of Champions. And we'll have drivers from across the state come down here and they'll vie for a $10,000 prize mm -hmm. and the limited late models. Uh, and then we'll have the Legends drivers from all over the state. And I say all over the state. They'll be from two or three states. They'll be racing uh, too. And uh, that's the Legends playoff shootout, if you will. And we'll have a ton of them. And so uh, Saturday we have the mini stock nationals on the 11th we'll have the mini stock nationals down there friday night we'll have um qualifying and then we'll have a pit party down at moonshiners mm. getting ready for that and they'll qualify on friday night race on saturday and then the big late models and with the big money race will be sunday afternoon starting at two o'clock so this is all the this is the big action race in here at the end of the season big action race last race of the season get your tickets you don't even hesitate come on out and visit us you know we throw out frisbees to the fan and on the back of the frisbees it may be a hundred dollars written on that oh, wow. and if your driver co you know coincides with the number that's on that frisbee well you know the deal you win a hundred dollars that's fun yeah man so we just have a good time at it we really do and you know i've been we've been actually uh, during the day today i've been picking putting together all the christmas events that we've got coming up mm -hmm. uh, around the community and uh, the laser show that you've got going on down there during the Christmas time is one of the cooler things that we offer as far yeah. as entertainment during the Christmas. Right, was last year, was that the first year you last did that? Last year was the first year, and this one's going to be even bigger and better. We've added more lasers to it with a little show involved in it, and it's the Holiday Laser Light Show, sponsored uh, in part by us and uh, EOP uh, of, from Emerald Isle. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that's what they do. And they were looking for for a place to uh, for somebody to partner with them, and the Carter County Speedway seemed like a perfect place. You you actually drive your car in there, you sit in the car, bring a lounge chair, lawn chair, you get out on the lawn if you want to, and for the next 35 or 40 minutes you forget about it. You bring in the holiday season, Christmas music, lights, and have a great time. And what's the date on that this year? Uh, starting November the 24th and 10, 25th, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And 26th. And then you got one more And then we got one more the first weekend in December. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so, exciting. man, come on down there. I'm telling you, folks, if you're out there listening and you've never been by Carter County Speedway, you know, I please invite you to come by there, whether we're racing or not. Come by and take a look at it because the days of the old dirt track and, you know, uh, just – it just it'll surprise you it's a diamond in the Tell rough people a little about the divisions and the kind of race cars they'll see when they go uh well we have everything we have about 10 divisions we just got done racing 10 wow. divisions they start at you know the little mini cup for the little kids you know the kids start anywhere from eight years old and they move right on up 12 13 years old in that division then you go from there and you got the u car division that means you can't afford it <laughs> uh so that's the type of car that is then all of a sudden you've got your um the mini stocks, they race out there. Do you have um, the legends? You have a, a charger car, which is about like a late model. Then you've got the late models. They'll be racing out there. And we've done trucks, and, and on a special event, we'll have some super trucks. They'll race out there too. Wow. Yeah. So street stocks. You know, we just had our night of champions, and Tyler Smith, he won that. He's the the champion this year, and Tyler won last year. He's, he's affiliated with Odom's Garage down there in Bear Creek. And um, so just uh, just a great bunch of people out there. They really are hardworking folks that normally they'll have a couple of people working on their cars with them. But it's mainly our working class guys that come down there and compete. Now, on the bigger races, you'll get some bigger teams that come down there, um, a little bit more funded. But, you know, let me tell you something. Just because you got a lot of money, don't mean you're going to win at Carter County That's Speedway. Right. It is a tough track. It's not about the horsepower. It's about being able to drive that flat track. And uh, when I say flat, it's uh, eight degree banking on the on the turns, which is on the small side. Which on the small side, yeah, because yeah. you take a regular bank track, it's like twenty some degrees, mm. thirty degrees, and we're eight eight degrees. And then on a straightaway, it's four degrees. Wow. So it's pretty much flat, and you're getting it when they go around that track at about uh, late models run about sixteen second lap yeah yeah and you can check out bobby watson's carter county speedway online at carter at com. yeah check him out on facebook carter county speedway you also have an app we do you do? yeah <laughs> yeah all right how about that how about that 
I know I got a great staff that oh, listen. They do all of that. I don't even know how to email. Well, there's lots know? of ways to connect and keep up with what's going on at the track. There is too, and I've got some great folks that work for me. You know, um, Miss Judy Haley. She's like second in charge up there. She does a great job behind the scenes, and I happen to be the one that's you know out front a lot of times. I'm the voice, so to speak. That's what they call me. You know, and uh, and it's an honor to be that way when having these folks working for us that that get the job done. You know, like you said, Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, <laughs> all that stuff, man. Well, Bob, we're so appreciative. You've been with us from day one, and yeah. we can't thank you enough, and we're happy to support you in any way we can. Well, the talk station has been with us since day one, too. You know, Lockwood and his staff, and like you said, from the swap shop, me getting on there, because when you're an old country boy, you do country marketing, right? We got signs on the side of the road in four counties. We still give out flyers, along with facebook ads and stuff like that but we still do grassroots marketing and uh, the talk station has been a friend of ours top-notch staff around here and lockwood's a good friend so anytime we can do anything for y'all please come on out there and like i said there's a car uh, available for one of y'all <laughs> keep that in mind all right we sure will yeah. when the spring rolls around we'll have you back and you'll let us know about what 2024 2024 love to yeah, have you back we're on. looking for even bigger things from 2024 awesome. thank yeah. you all. thank you all too and y'all have a blessed evening